Good morning and welcome to the Crafty Canary for your tip on Tuesday. Today I'm going to show you how to make a reusable pad for a Swiffer wet jet mop. Now, I ran out one day and really needed to mop, but I didn't have time to go to the store and I usually order them from Amazon anyway, so I didn't have time to wait. I needed to mop pretty soon after that, but I did have time to make one. So I searched online, how can I make a reusable pad for my Swiffer mop? And I found how to make them for the dust mop that Swiffer sells, but I couldn't find one for the actual mop with the cleaning fluid in it. And the problem I was having, the ones for the um, dust mop would go over the place where the solution needs to shoot out of the mop, it has two holes in the front. This is a nasty, dirty mop because I've used it for so many years, where the solution comes out. See those holes, one right there and one right there. So I can't cover those up. So I really need to make the pad look just like it looks um, when it's the disposable ones that you can buy from the store. Now I don't have any of those because I've actually made them and I really like them. So I've continued to use them and haven't spent any money on any new disposable ones. So what you need is a nice thick old towel. So of course a towel you're not gonna use anymore because we're gonna cut up, but a good thick one that's very absorbent. The loop part of your Velcro, you won't need the hook part because on the bottom of the mop, there is that hook part of the Velcro. So you'll need the loop part. And if you wanna do it this way, some bias tape. Now you can buy this, occasionally it's on sale at Hobby Lobby for 99 cents a package and you don't even need a full package. You don't need much at all. So if you've ever used it, you probably have some remnants hanging around that you didn't use the full package the last time you used it. And that's what I have here. I've just pulled some out of my remnant bag and I'm gonna use it to close up the ends so that any of the ends of the towel that are not hemmed, I can put some bias tape on so that it will not ravel because towels, terry cloth will ravel pretty bad if it's just a cut raw edge. So let me show you how it's done. So I measured the end of my mop and it was a four and a half by 10 and a half inch rectangle. So I'm gonna make it just a teeny bit smaller than that. So I cut my rectangle 10 and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I what I did was because my towel had this kind of decorative edge on both ends, if it had had one end that was just hemmed, I would have used that hemmed edge um, so that I wouldn't have to hem it or wouldn't have to put the binding on. But because it had that hem edge, I went ahead and cut it out so that I have one of the short sides from a hemmed edge, and then these three are raw edges. And you can even see as I'm sitting here that this is raveling and coming off. Terry cloth is a really bad raveler if it's not hemmed or finished in some way. You could use the bias tape like I'm about to do, or you can surge it. Now that probably won't get you as much wear out of it. It probably will ravel more quickly if it's surged, but it'll be less bulky, so that's a an advantage to that, um, or you could hem it yourself. But if you wanna hem it, you need to cut the edges that you need to hem slightly bigger than the, the finished um, width and length that you want it. So if you're going for a length of 10 and a quarter and a width of four and a quarter, you need to cut it about, I would say, even 11 by five so that you have plenty to hem on each end. Um, but we're gonna use the bias tape in this video, but you can do it any way you want to make it easy for yourself. What I did was cut the short end exactly to the measurement, so four and a quarter. So that one we're just gonna put on this end. Yes, we'll have raw edges, but I cut each of these a little bit longer than 10 and a quarter so that I have enough on the ends that I can fold under and go over these raw edges so that we don't have them. So let's get started. First, we're going to pin on the short edge. So when I'm using bias tape, I always want to pin and sew from the edge that is smaller. So you see they make bias tape this way so that when you sew on this edge, you are definitely gonna cut, you are definitely going to catch the back edge. If you were to turn it this way and sew close to the pressed edge of the back, you would miss that smaller edge. So make sure you're sewing on this end that has the um, smaller folded edge. So we're gonna put that on this end, the short end, and we're gonna pin that on. So give me a second and I'll pin that on. So now it's pinned on and let's sew it. I'm gonna move you over here closer to the sewing machine. Forgive the moving uh, camera, put my glasses on. 
and we're going to sew close to that pressed edge. And remember, we've got the smaller folded edge on top so that we're gonna catch the bigger one in the back when we sew. And I am just using white thread. I know it may not match this green bias tape, but since this is actually a cleaning product that I am using at home, it does not matter. And I can have whatever thread I had on the machine. So there we go. So that is sewn on. And now we're gonna pin on the longer edges and fold under that raw edge at the top. Let me show you how that's done. So now let's fold under just a little bit on that edge. And remember, we're keeping that smaller edge of the bias tape on top. And we're going to put it on the edge of that one. And again, if there's a teeny bit of raw edge showing, it is really not a big deal. Um, it might ravel a little bit, but again, this is for a cleaning product that we're only going to use at home, so we don't have to be too picky about how it looks or um, the raveling. The raveling really is just for our own sake, and you don't want terry cloth bits all over your laundry that you've done, even if it is just a load of old towels. So I'm going to pin that on, and when I get to the bottom, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did at the top. So now I'm here and I have the hemmed edge of the towel that I cut from and I'm just going to turn under what I've got left so that it, can you see what I'm doing there? Sorry for my old looking fingers. Turn it under there and pin that on. All right and I'll pin both sides and then come back and sew them down for you. Okay, both sides are pinned, so let's sew them up. Okay, both sides are sewn up. Now let's look on the back and see if I caught all the edges. I hope I did since I'm on camera. Oh, I missed a little one right there. Let's see if this side is, this side is good. But since I missed a little one, it's not a big deal. This is just a cleaning supply. Now, if this were a nice garment or an apron that I was using to finish off some edges with, I would want to go back, take it out and make sure it looked nice. But it's just a pad for the mop, so we're okay. I'm just gonna go on the back side and tack that down with my machine just like this. Look, back stitch and we're done. Not a big deal. So if you do something like that, don't worry. It, you don't have to be perfect with this. Let's let go of some of that perfectionism that I tend to have anyway. I don't know if you were like me, but I tend to be kind of perfectionist, especially when we're doing things like this. It really does not matter. Now, we are going to put on our Velcro, and you want to put it on. It really doesn't matter which side uh, because it's going to be, unless you see that one side seems like more like a mop side, more absorbent than the other, it doesn't matter. The side that you put the Velcro on is the side that's gonna go up against the mop. The side that you don't put the Velcro on is the side that's gonna go on the floor. So we're gonna cut two pieces, the length of our mop pad. I'm just gonna measure that one like that. Don't you love the way I do this? So technical, I know exactly how wide it is probably 10 and a quarter or a little less than 10 and a quarter. So now I'm gonna put that on the very edge. I wanna make sure I don't go over the edge so I have something to sew to, but I'm gonna put it right on the edge. That one is a little shorter, so it might only be like nine and three quarters. So I'll pin that on and I'm gonna sew on both sides of the Velcro. So I'll have to make, for to sew both of these on, I'll have to make four different seams or four different uh, stitchings but let me show you where I'm gonna sew before I start. Ooh, sometimes pins do not like to go into that Velcro. So I'm going to sew right here along the part that doesn't have the fuzzy and right here. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So let me sew this one on. So if I stopped here, and did not sew on the other side, I'd have a piece of Velcro that was flopping around. So I wanna make sure I tack down that other side too, but I don't need to have any pins in it now because it's already sewn on one side, so it will stay. I'll just keep it down with my hand. And 
and I will sew the other one on and be right back. So I'm finished with my new Swiffer pad and I'll show you how I put it on the mop. You take the Velcro side and just stick it down on the end of the mop and it works like a charm. And like I said, I have used these since I made that and it's been probably two months since I did that and I've not wanted to go out and buy anymore. So I've saved us some money. I've saved the environment a little bit because I'm not throwing those pads away. Now one drawback I do find the pads actually must have those little um, absorbent beads in them like diapers do so that it absorbs the liquid so when you mop those pads are absorbing that liquid a little better and your floor is a little drier when you finish it's not completely dry but it's a little drier when you finish so when you use the reusable homemade ones your floor is going to be a little wetter for a little bit longer and you can't you can't mop as big of a room or as much of your house with one pad. You'll need to change it out if you have a lot of wooden or um, hard floors to mop. You'll want to change it out you two or three for a, for a good size house if it's a lot of flooring because it's not absorbing. Now that also, because you're using these, is saving the environment because that is part of what is so bad um, about those things is those beads don't break down and um, so they're not that great for the environment. So that's one of the reasons I use it. But really at this point in our budget to save money in the way the economy is right now, anything I can do to save our budget is really helpful. So I hope this tip was helpful for you. If you have any ideas about um, how to save money um, in cleaning and in mopping, just let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please uh, join me each week for a tip on Tuesday. See my Instagram at the.crafty.canary, my Facebook at Crafty Canary, and see my website at www.thecraftycanary.com. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.